Thank you so much, Wonola. That was very um, insightful. And hopefully this um, session will be able to give you the answers you're looking for, at least some of those answers that you can then share with your clients, because I think we're all here in one way or the other to, to um, learn more about how to make the sports and entertainment industry, at least the business side of things, a lot more structured and sustainable. Regulatory okay. compliance slides coming up. Okay, so an entrepreneur's guide to compliance, fantastic. Like I said, this is geared towards entrepreneurs, so pardon if it is basic, but at the end of the day, we can treat this as a refresher. Okay, so can we flip to the first page? So compliance itself, you know, like I was saying, compliance is something you hear about more so when you are in say the financial services sector. I started off in the financial services sector. So compliance is something that is droned at the back of your head constantly. Yeah, um, compliance is, is really about rules and regulations or so, or so it may seem. When people hear compliance, they think, oh, comply, strict rules, um, police. Most people um, say that um, compliance officers are akin to the police, the watchdogs of um, organizations. And no doubt sports and creative industries as well, they probably are the last of the Mohicans when it comes to structure. Every other industry has had their fair share of, um, of, of structure, but um, for the most part, the sports and, and entertainment industries have, have, have lacked that, I guess, because those industries are known to be very dynamic by nature, glamorous, emotional. So you never think of, um, of um, structure when you think about such um, industries, but actually that's wrong, that's changing. Um, we see very well run sports industries. Sorry, can you go back? Okay, can you just, okay, the next slide and you can stay on the next slide. After the next, okay, stop here. Thank you. Okay, so like I was saying, compliance, you hear about that in banking, you hear about that in, um, in, in stockbroking, et cetera. But actually compliance is necessary to operate and run any business successfully. It doesn't matter how big, how small, compliance is extremely necessary. Um, I liked what Wanu shared about you know, being an accountant, working with creatives. And I, I, I mean, she didn't say this, but I can imagine how frustrating it can be, you know, being a professional because accountants, lawyers, you know, we all come, we, we come from the genteel uh, industries, right? Where we, we, we carry ourselves with a certain level of decorum. We're taught about, you know, rules of professional conduct. So it's ingrained in us from, you know, from, from our training, our formative um, years that we are supposed to behave in a specific way. But for certain industries like sports and, and um, entertainment, they don't really have the benefit of such training. So things can be a little bit haphazard and that's what we're on a mission to change. Compliance is something that should be willingly embraced by all industries. Compliance is not just for um, structured environment. Compliance is not something you only do in a, in a law firm or in a big bank. Compliance can be, can be carried out even in a football club. It can be carried out in a, in a mini, mini, mini graphic design studio. You know, so every business, big or small, is expected to have a, a clear compliance and business strategy. You know, compliance is really about doing things properly. It's about, it's about following the rules. It's about following the rules which will apply to you either internally or which will apply to your organization externally. So you talk about um, regulatory frameworks. Frameworks can be external to your environment. So when you think about, say, um, um, the financial services regulatory framework. The external framework will be governed by the likes of, say, the Central Bank of Nigeria. It will be governed by the Nigeria Stock Exchange if you're a stockbroker. But internally in your business, if you're a sports person, say you are a swimming professional, say you um, own a swimming academy, who will guide your business? We're looking at rules of FINA, 
OK? Federation Internationale um, 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 I think Nautica, yeah. So FINA, which is the overall body for, um, for, for swimming, will determine the type of regulatory framework that you should deploy, OK? And I suppose the same goes for um, a graphic designer. I mean, a graphic designer does not have any regulatory body they belong to, but at the same time, there will be good there'll be good codes of practice that they can, they can deploy, okay? So we've talked about doing things properly and obeying the external regulatory rules and regulations that your business operates in. So this is key, getting our clients to understand compliance is good for business, okay? So as we go into, um, into 2021, we need to be looking at the gaps in our businesses. Okay, where are the gaps? What can we do better to make the business run more efficiently. I would really like to hear from um, Kelvin, who runs a football league in Abuja. Actually, you know, he runs a football club to share what challenges he you know, encounters. So hopefully Kelvin will be able to, to share. We can turn to the next slide, please. So that's just the, you know, the basics on compliance. Compliance is about doing things properly. Now, how do we develop a strong compliance culture? We've talked about having a strategy. So what exactly is that strategy? That strategy can involve many things. That strategy can be operational. So you're looking at, I have to, I have to kind of speak from the point of view of, <laughs> because I know not everybody here is 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 new to is um, familiar with compliance terms, so you need to attack it from an operational point of view. Getting your operational um, frameworks in place is very very key. Okay, then behavioral, making sure that the people that you hire are fit to do what they're supposed to do. Because, you know, it's one thing to have a business that has the best rules, rules and regulations developed by the best, uh, the be you know, the big four, you know, everybody tends to go to the big four when we talk about um, compliance. But if you don't have the right people present in your business, you're gonna run into problems. So you need to develop a value system where, where Compliance is seen as, a, as something that everybody participates in, okay? So compliance is, is, is a culture, actually. I should say compliance is a culture. Now, just, another, just something else to, to, to add. Um, basic things like don't transact business without a contract. I mean, that's just basic. But you'll be surprised that many people in the sports and creative industry do not realize that these are very basic things. You don't do business without documentation. You have to document all your, all your dealings. I mean, I mean, I know in the entertainment industry, things can be a bit fluid. Um, you have a lot of oral gentleman agreements, but then with, with the flurry of, um, <laughs> of um, complaints that we see on social media where people are firing, oh, this person did this to me, this person didn't pay me, this person took my logo and didn't give me credit. We realize that that kind of fluidity has its disadvantages. It's great that it's dynamic by nature, but certain things just have to always come to play. Business contracts and agreements, as you all know on this call, because majority of you are indeed lawyers. Um, so, I mean, if, I mean, I assume that when you have your own businesses outside legal practice, you would also be implementing best practice of always making sure you have decent agreements, okay? And then another thing we need to change, the culture of, you know, approaching um, um, professionals, as a last resort. How do we change this culture of, you know, approaching um, professionals? We should, we should be the first port of call when they're, you know, undertaking a new project. Like, again, referring back to Wanuala who mentioned that she's working on a film project as an accountant. That's new and that's, that's forward thinking of this film product of this film production company to engage an accountant from the outset and you know why when you have um, the pandemic 
severely impacting distribution of film through the normal channels so on streaming as i mean disney plus channel i think as that they 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 created the channel not that long ago and when they when they opened the, up the channel i believe their subscription uptake was as high as i think between 87 and 97 million subscribers that is huge that is the, the size of a small country or even a medium sized country so you can clearly see that online streaming is the way forward netflix and all these other um online platforms, Hulu and, and the likes, they're all giving, I mean, C, C, um, CND, um, CBS, etc. They're all giving filmmakers a new platform for where they can, um, you know, sh um, showcase their, their skills, their movies. So we really need to think about, um, about how to improve the culture of working with professionals like lawyers and accountants, etc. Because Netflix is not going to hire you for a project if they feel that you are not structured. It's just the truth. Netflix has a certain standard that they, and I'm not speaking for Netflix, but I'm speaking from the point of view of having worked on projects that are taken up by Netflix. So there's a certain minimum standard that has to be, to be deployed. So, if you're not working, not doing specific for the film industry, they won't, they won't engage you. So we see that having a, comply, a strong compliance structure can actually benefit your business because it, it projects you forward. It gives your business more visibility. Yeah. So we can, um, we can take it to the next slide if possible. So it's really important for our clients to have at the back of their minds why being compliant, yes, it may be more costly, but it will benefit your business in the long run. So we're talking about personnel. Are we employing the right people in our businesses? The skill sets of 2019, even as, even as recently as 2019, the skill set for 2020, 2021 is drastically changing. Do you you have the right people in your business to propel your business forward. And this even applies to legal practices as well. Legal practices have, have moved on from the old conventional, traditional practices where we're just sitting, sitting in our offices, waiting for clients to walk through the door. No, we need to be more um, um, creative and innovative about how we um, are, um, are, are attracting our clients. Are we, do we have the necessary um, IT skills? Are we familiar with, um, um, you know, um, new ways of, um, you know, reaching clients? Obviously, we can't advertise, so we have to be a bit more inventive. Some of us on this call, on this webinar, have podcasts where we're able to showcase our skills and expertise without necessarily selling ourselves outright. Um, do we have um, virtual, virtual, virtual management skills? Do we have, you know, modern skills? Because the truth of the matter is, if you don't innovate with the times, you're ex you, you'll become like a dinosaur. So we, we need to pay attention to, to, to improving ourselves on a continuous basis so that our businesses in turn will, will, will stay in line with the times. We're going to be looking at tax compliance with my colleague Ifatu in a, in a bit, analyzing all the changes that are coming in. As you well know, oil revenue has reduced you know no one is buying from nigeria as much as before um, um there's so there's going to be a glut a glut of oil without uptakers so the country nigeria itself the nigerian government itself is looking at new ways of raising revenue and guess what we are always going to be the first target <laughs> Our businesses will be the primary target for revenue 
for the revenue drive? Are you, is your business well positioned? Does your business have a TIN number? Does your business have a VAT number? These are so many things we need to think about. Does your business have insurance? We never talk about insurance. I, I always feel like insurance is just very unsexy. No one talks about insurance, but look at the pandemic. How many sports and entertainment businesses were prepared for the pandemic? How many of them had written it into their risk management plans? I think there was one interesting story that I had come across about, um, I think it's Wimbledon. And Wimbledon's um, legal team were clearly, um, um, they, were cl they clearly had the foresight to know that it is prudent and good practice to plan for, I suppose you could say a pandemic. Who was thinking about pan? I mean, when we write our, our force major clauses, which all of us here are familiar with, how many of us put prior to, 20, prior to 2019, because I know the pandemic actually started late 2019, how many of us had paid attention to the force major clause? Very few of us had paid attention to it. So, um, you know, um, we need to be thinking about, you know, clauses, insurance, you know, pre um, preparing ourselves for the future. Business continuity. Again, this year alone, we've seen the demise, we've witnessed the demise of, sadly, so many um, amazing entrepreneurs. You would have heard about the demise of um, the CEO of Zappos. You would have heard about the untimely and very sad demise of um, of um, um, a lady called Ibi Duni, who was responsible for um, the beautiful Christmas lights that we see in Lagos every Christmas on failingly, um, you know. So business continuity, are, are businesses planning for, 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 for the future or are they just conducting business and hoping that, well, things will just continue to stay the same? Cybersecurity, apparently my I haven't got much time left, so I have to keep it, make it snappy. Cybersecurity and data management, we're seeing so much coming out of the NITDA about the need for data um, 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 privacy, data security. You know, so these are things we really need to pay attention to. Can we go to the next slide, please? If that's all right. So I can zap through this quickly. Next slide, please. Yes, like I said, keeping track of regulatory changes is very important. You know, one thing about this life, nothing is guaranteed, they say, except what? Death and taxes. So we need to be constantly on the lookout for change. Because if you don't keep up with the times, you become extinct. So, you know, use um, all the social media handles available at your disposal. Most of the governmental agencies are actually on, 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 on social media. Obviously, we have the traditional newspapers that you can also use. Follow OAL's page as well. OAL Nigeria to stay abreast of regulatory changes. And also my, my personal handle as well. Uh, Maxi B, M A X X Y B. It's, um, I tend to post a lot on um, regulatory changes and updates because these are things that affect our businesses directly. And if you don't plan for the future, the future will basically plan for you. Um, so, tools to assist with accounting and regulatory compliance. I can give you a couple of tools. Um, uh, there's internal tools as well as well. I mean, we all we always we have accountants even on, on, on this webinar. Um, we have an internal tax team as well that can also assist with with um, accounting. Well, at least from the legal perspective. So yes, that is my session. Um, I'm sorry if I rushed a little bit because I've been I I've been told I need to to move on to the next session.